In this video, we're going to provide a proof for the existence of the nine point circle for an arbitrary circle. The theorem that we'll prove says that the midpoints of the sides of a triangle and the points of intersection of the altitudes on those sides and the midpoints of the segments that join the orthocenter to the vertices all lie on a circle. This is called a nine point circle because each of those three groups has three points in it. So here for an arbitrary triangle ABC, we have all nine of these points uh, plotted out. In red, we have the midpoints of the sides. In green, we have the points of intersection of the altitudes and the sides. And in blue, we have the inter uh, we have the midpoints of the segments that join the orthocenter, which you can imagine is right around here, and each of the three vertices. And certainly this picture strongly suggests that these could be on a circle, and we're going to see why in a minute. So in our proof, we're going to assume that we have our triangle, and then we construct the circle that contains A prime, B prime, and C prime. This is possible because this is just the uh, circumscribed circle around these three points. And what we're going to do is ask questions about, well, what else is on that circle? For instance, this altitude right here, uh, where it intersects the side BC is at point D. Is this point on our circle? And certainly our diagram suggests that it is, but we can uh, explain why that should be uh, and explain why this is not just some fluke of how we chose the triangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct uh, an out, or, uh, a line segment from the vertex here to the midpoint of the side. And we're going to recall a, a, a result that we have that says that if you connect the vertex, uh, the vertex at the right angle of a right triangle to the midpoint of the hypotenuse, that the resulting line segment has exactly half the length of the hypotenuse. So this line segment here will have the same length as this segment here. And of course, since that's exactly half of the hypotenuse, that has the same length as AB prime. But what uh, what's most important here is that this half of a hypotenuse here is also equal to the length of this line segment here, A prime, C prime. And that's because we have uh, basically a large pair of similar triangles. We have the triangle ABC and the triangle C prime, A prime, C. These are similar triangles because they're both, uh, I mean, they share all the same angles. So this angle here is equal to this angle here. This angle is shared between these two and this angle here and this angle here are the same. Uh, and of course, since this is the midpoint of this side, uh, the ratio of similarity is 2 to 1 from the larger to the smaller. So this whole side here is twice the length of this side here. Therefore this half side has the same length as this whole side. So this line segment here which we said has half the length of that hypotenuse must have the same length as A prime C prime. Now if we construct a trapezoid here uh, we have two parallel sides, and the non-parallel sides are uh, have the same length, and therefore this is an isosceles trapezoid, which means, among many other things, that the opposite angles are supplementary, which means that those four points can be uh, inscribed all on the same circle, and since A prime, B prime, and C prime are already on this circle here, that must mean that D is also on that circle. <clears throat> and this is great news because it's exactly what we wanted. So D is on this circle with A prime, B prime, and C prime. Now we can repeat this argument for the other, th the other two points where the altitudes intersect the sides. You construct your point, in this case E, and you show that uh, e with the, pro the points A prime, B prime, and C prime can be uh, can form an isosceles trapezoid, and therefore it can be inscribed in a circle. And since A prime, B prime, and C prime are on that circle, it must be the same circle that we're we're looking at. So we do the same thing for F, <clears throat> and we've established that all three of those points are on our circle. So at this point, we have a six-point circle because we've proved that there are 
these six special points on it. <clears throat> now, uh, to to turn our set our sights on the other three points, we're going to look at the midpoints of the segments that connect the ortho center to each of the vertices. Now what we're going to do is we're going to begin assuming that we have a circle, of course, but in this case we're going to assume that the circle is the circle that has J A prime as a diameter. Okay, And then we're going to ask the question, is B prime and C prime, are those two points also on the circle? And of course uh, this would be a poorly organized proof if they answered it and turned out to be yes. And here's the reason why. This line segment here, J prime B or J B prime, is parallel to the segment F B. Uh, and the reason for this is that B prime is the midpoint of this side of the triangle. So we're going to consider the triangle A and the orthocenter and B. Now I'm regretting not giving that a better name. And J is the midpoint of this side of that triangle. And so when you connect the two midpoints of, uh, of two sides of the triangle, the, the line segment that connects those two will be parallel to the third side. So this segment will be parallel to BF, will be parallel to this altitude, uh, and therefore will be orthogonal to the side AC. And now when we construct our segment B prime A prime, since this is also connecting two midpoints of a triangle, or two midpoints of sides of a triangle, this side will be parallel to the side AC, uh, which means that it will be orthogonal to JB prime, which means that we have a right angle there. Uh, and since we have a right angle here, and J A prime is assumed to be the, the diameter of a circle, that means that B prime is on that same circle. Uh, of course, we haven't established that this is the same circle as the uh, one we were considering before, because right now we just have um, <clears throat> these three points. We have J, we have B prime, and we have A prime on it. And there's, uh, it's certainly possible that C prime uh, in general wouldn't be on that circle, even though our diagram strongly suggests that it is. So we're going to repeat this argument uh, over here. We're going to look at, uh, we're going to show that J C prime is or is parallel to um, the altitude E C, um, which of course is orthogonal to the line A B. Um, and since A prime C prime is parallel to A B, then that means that these two segments must be orthogonal, which means that also C prime is on this circle that has J A prime as the uh, as the diameter. So now, of course, C prime is also on the circle, and so now J A prime B prime and C prime are all in the same circle. And again, the the nine point circle we began with just assuming. Uh, is the circle that contains A prime, B prime, and C prime. As you might guess, we're going to repeat this argument uh, for the other midpoints of the segments that join the orthocenter to the vertices. So we're going to take the circle for which K B prime is the diameter, and we construct those two or we show that these two triangles are right triangles, which indicates that C prime and A prime are on the same circle at, that has B prime K as its diameter. So K is on the same circle as A prime, B prime, C prime, D, E, F, and J, which we had previously shown. And of course, we do this one more time. We assume we have a circle on which L C prime is the diameter. And so we can show by uh, 
basically a series of arguments about parallel and perpendicular lines that L A prime C is a right angle therefore A prime L and C are on this very circle that has L C prime as the diameter same applies to B prime so now we have L on the same circle as A prime B prime C prime D E F J and K now if you count very closely that's one two three four five six seven eight nine points that we've proved are all on this same circle